So this is the station that was up in Lemitar. Um, so here clearly is the big one, um, which was the magnitude 2.9 to 3.3 um, earthquake. Um, there are clearly some that were before that, um, and they started, um, let's see, so this was 11, 10, 9, um, you know, so between probably 8, 30, 9 o'clock last night, um, some of these smaller magnitude earthquakes started. Um, if we look at the, uh, you know, actually there was an earthquake that was at a, uh, a couple of earthquakes at about um, 10 or 11 yesterday morning, um, you know, that probably looks like started off this set of activity. You can see that there's not much going on before that, so this would have been, um, let's see, Monday night up here, and then Tuesday morning we had a couple, and then uh, Tuesday night they started in earnest, and then we had the big earthquake. Um, you know, this isn't that unusual for this area. There have been swarms in this uh, general area west of Socorro before. Um, in fact, there was a set of earthquakes that happened in October 2005. Um, slightly different location, um, still west of Socorro, but similar characteristics where we had um, you know, some earthquakes beforehand, then we had a big one, and then we have a bunch of smaller earthquakes afterwards. Most of the seismicity in this area is roughly related to the Socorro magma body, um, where you have the uplift and then causing stresses in the crust above it, um, and that's going to produce earthquakes. Um, one of my students, Jana Stankova, had looked at the October 2005 swarm, um, and you know, she was trying to line them up on you know, if there were any mapped faults in the area, um, and you know, she had uh, you know, limited success. Um, you know, these earthquakes may have been on a, a fault that w wasn't mapped previously, um, so you know, roughly consistent with magma body seismicity. Um, most likely these are going to be in the same area. Um, one of my students, John Morton, is working now on locating these um, smaller earthquakes that happened um, both last night before the big one and then also afterwards. Um, and it's, it's going to be a, a long process because there are lots of, of earthquakes <laughs> in this series. Um, you know, he had identified or he had isolated um, a, a data set um, about five minutes after this big earthquake and you can see lots of little ones. Don't, they don't even show up very well here, but lots of little ones. After. How many earthquakes that happened last night? Uh, quite a few. I've got a picture here. This is right after the main shock of the event. And let's see. I'm gonna close it now, but yeah, as you can see, there's at least 10 or 15 just in that 10 minute period after those things and I imagine there's probably going to be several hundred once this is all done. So you have your work cut out for you. For oh while. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you Joan Morton. So this is uh, highlighting the big earthquake um, and so you can see individual traces for all of the stations in our network that recorded that bigger earthquake. Um, but if we look at uh, some of the stations that are close by to where the earthquake happened, you see the big earthquake here, and then you see a whole bunch of little individual earthquakes um, that, you know, this was in the uh, 10 minutes after the big earthquake. Um, you know, so it's you know, it's even hard to count, it's hard to know how many are in here, which we won't be able to pull out, but there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, um, just within that, uh, and probably more, just within that ten minute period after the earthquake. Um, and so that, that'll be interesting to be able to go in and pull out these individual earthquakes. Um, because the, you can just see here, these all look very similar, suggesting that they're all happening in the same place. Um, we use different uh, ways to calculate the magnitude. What we do here, um, we look at uh, the duration of the waveform. Um, so let's look at this one. Uh, 
Um, so what we do here is we take the time between where this first P wave comes in to where the signal drops back down to the background level um, and we use that to calculate a magnitude. Um, and that is a magnitude scale that Al Sanford developed um, several decades ago to look at the sizes of earthquakes in this area. The USGS does a different, uh, uses a different method. Um, they will take the amplitude of the body waves, particularly the P wave, um, and use that to calculate a magnitude for the earthquake. Um, you know, one of the problems that we have with our local network, recording a, an earthquake of this size, um, a lot of the close-in stations, that P wave is actually clipped. We don't get the full magnitude, so it's hard to use that amplitude measurement um, for the P waves to get a magnitude. So we use the duration scale. Yeah, you can see where it flattens out <laughs> right there, right there, um, and up there. It's, it's clipping, so we're not getting the full amplitude of that initial wave. Um, so that's why the magnitude scales are a little different, or the magnitude numbers are a little different. Um, it's just different ways to calculate it. I wouldn't be surprised if we have, um, you know, some s smaller earthquakes in the next couple days. Um, probably we won't feel them. Um, the set of events in October of 2005, there were some before, then there was a felt one, and then, um, you know, there were uh, sort of over 1,600 small earthquakes in the month after uh, that big one. None of them we ever felt. Um, you know, they were all very, very tiny. Um, but there were lots of them in there. How many calls have you all got gotten about this earthquake? Um, so far today, um, sort of 10 to 15. Um, you know, people felt it uh, all over uh, the Squirrow and Lemitar area. Um, I know people have called in from uh, Polvadera and Magdalena, so um, people have felt it. People have also um, gone to the U.S. Geological Survey website and uh, reported their experience. Um, and we can look at that map. Um, let's see. So the USGS um, has, they locate earthquakes around the country and around the world. Um, here's our dot <laughs> for the earthquake last night. And they provide information um, on their website about the size of the earthquake, the date and time. Um, they also provide the did you feel it maps. So um, this map records um, community intensities or uh, people fill out a web page um, that they put in their zip code and they put in um, what they felt. Um, whether dishes were shaking or you know, if anything fell off shelves, um, if they were woken up from sleep. Um, and the USGS then contours up those felt reports. Um, and so most of this you can see is in the light blue to light purple. So it's weak to light shaking. Um, so uh, no damage reported. Um, but there have been 37 uh, responses. So 37 people in this local area have contacted or gone to the USGS webpage and filled out their web form, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, people from all over the country, when they have an earthquake in California, they'll go on and report what they felt. Um, you know, we have smaller populations, so we only get 37 or <laughs> 40 responses versus the thousands that they get in California. But um, these maps are really useful um, for scientists to get an idea of uh, the size of the earthquake in terms of, you know, how how far the felt reports extend. Um, so it's it's useful information.